Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm continuing um, my discussion on the recent paper that has come out called Past Perspectives on the Present Era of Abrupt Climate Change. So what this paper does is it defines um, abrupt Arctic climate change as change where the temperature of the Arctic rises greater than one degree Celsius per decade. Okay, now parts of the Arctic um, rise up to more like something more like two and a half degrees Celsius per decade um, in, in, some, in some regions. Okay, um, so that's uh, what we're seeing today. So in order to try to determine what's going to happen next and how quickly it will happen, we can delve into the past, into the paleo records, and look at the uh, data from when the Earth went through abrupt uh, temperature change, abrupt climate change in the past. So if we look in the period from 120,000 years ago, roughly the last uh, interglacial period, the end of the last interglacial period, we went into a glacial period, a cooler period. But during this period, there were these so-called dansgaard osher oscillations, uh, over 20 of these events where the temperature jumped up at least one degree Celsius per decade, even up to two and a half degrees Celsius per decade, and lasted for, you know, three, four decades, typically. Um, and so, you know, at two and a half degrees Celsius per decade rise in some regions of the Arctic, that'd be about a 10 degrees Celsius rise um, over the abrupt warming period, and then it would slowly cool down. So we can compare the warming today to the warming from the, uh, these Dangard Osher oscillations, not just in terms of the rate of warming, but in terms of the spatial distribution of where the warming is actually occurring in the Arctic. And all of these things are strongly occurring when we lose Arctic sea ice. So the warming causes a loss of Arctic sea ice, which causes more warming, and you get a cascading um, amplifying feedback, increasing the rate of sea ice loss. And that's what we see now, but we can compare it to these dansgaard osher oscillation periods. And we can also, so we can look at the computer models and see how they model these, these, uh, in, the, these uh, dansgaard osher oscillations, the temperature rise, and compare it to the rise today. And we can also look at the models of what we're projecting into the future, the climate models um, in the RCP 8.5 high emission scenario, and that'll be that, and compare both of the other um, cur both of the other situations. So the present situation, the situation um, with the Dansgaard Osher oscillations, and then the modeled situation with high emission scenario in the future and we can compare all of these and once again it no, should be no surprise that the models are underestimating the warming in the arctic okay so that was the that's the gist of it that's the in a nutshell what i'm trying to show here so this is the paper past perspectives on the present era of abrupt climate change okay so this is, uh, I showed you this uh, last video. So this is the temperature at two meters. This is the warming of the near surface air temperature uh, over, the, over a 40 year time scale um, from the European uh, reanalysis data. And the hash, the, the line here is encompassing all re regions which are have greater than one degree celsius per decade abrupt warming in the arctic now this is mostly on the eurasia side here's greenland here's here's canada okay uh, scandinavia so the eurasia side and uh, so it's a large area when there's uh you know there's very rapid warming and there's a smaller confined area that's seen 1.5 to 2.5 degrees celsius Per decade of warming, okay. Um, there's some data that's over 2.5, but it's hard to see where it is on here. 
Um, and now we can look at the sea ice, uh, the annual trend in sea ice over that 40 year period. And this is a drop in sea ice concentration percentage per decade. So exceeding 10% uh, per decade loss. And you can see, you know, this is, this is the trace line of the temperature, right? And you can see there's huge amounts of sea ice loss in this region. Also, you know, in this region where the temperature, where the warming trend is not so significant, is not as significant as in this region. Okay, but this, so the sea ice, so you get warming, you get sea ice loss, and you get more warming and more warming, and it feeds back in a very strong positive feedback cycle. This is, uh, notice that Greenland here is not getting the, the tremendous warming. Okay, this is what today's warming looks like. If we look in the Greenland, uh, the NGRIP uh, ice data, and again, NGRIP is over here, about three, three kilometers high. The ice cores are taken from there. Then this is go looking back the last 60,000 years, and each of these red lines are the temperatures rising greater than that threshold of one degree Celsius per decade. This is an expanded scale of one of the oscillations. So rapid rise in temperature, slow cooling back down, another rapid rise and so on. Here's where we are today. Okay, so these are the only transitions where we exceed this one degree Celsius per, per decade threshold. Now, this is the um, reconstructed and modeled abrupt changes. So the NGRIP data, the me, if you take a whole bunch of transitions of these, these warming transitions in Greenland. Okay, these guys, these red lines, take a bunch of them, expand them out. This is what you get, overlap them. Um, this is a standard deviation, um, the, the variability of those, of all the transitions. And this is the mean here. And if you look, this is a degree Celsius slope per decade. This is two degrees. The red line is steeper than the two degrees Celsius. So it's 2.5 maybe even approaching three. So the data shows a very, very rapid rise in temperature over, you know, a time scale, we're just on decades here. And uh, the modeled data from the Norwegian Earth System model is the dashed, uh, the, the fluctuating blue line here. And you can see that the slope of this guy, of the actual model doesn't match the data. The slope is still to it, it's not, an, uh, this is maybe a degree Celsius, slightly more than a degree Celsius per decade if you draw a straight line through here. It's certainly not approaching the, the, the slope, the red, the red slope of the actual data. Okay, um, now if you look at the spatial distribution of the warming during these uh, Dansgaard Osher oscillations, um, th this is what the model shows you for those periods. It shows you that, don't forget, we're in a cooler glacial period back then. So there's a lot more sea ice. So most of the warming occurs actually in this region, south of Greenland. You know, the high, the high uh, over 1.5 to 2.5 degrees Celsius per decade warming. So the magnitude of the warming is similar to today, but the, um, but the actual, uh, it's in a different location. It's over here, and the sea ice loss is predominantly over here and over here. Remember, there's a lot more sea ice because uh, the, 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 uh, we're in a glacial period, okay? Um, and if you do the, um, if, you do, if, the, if you model the uh, RCP 8.5 going into the future, you can see the, uh, the surface uh, trend, temperature trend, the warming is, is greatest in this whole region. It doesn't have the same distribution that we see present day, so it doesn't agree too much. It does in general trends, but not spatially. And this is where the sea ice is lost, again, reaching you know 10% reduction of concentration per decade, but it doesn't folk it doesn't concentrate on the Eurasian side as the as the uh, data data shows. And this is the Arctic temperature trend under different forcing scenarios. So RCP 2.6, 4.5, and 8.5. And uh, this is where the data is showing the present day warming. 
and this is the 2.6 scenario. So there's some agreement in the model around the coastlines on the Eurasia side. If we go to the 4.5 scenario, uh, we can expect a lot more sea ice loss and the 8.5 scenario right here, you know, complete huge warming in the Arctic with the, you know, uh, the ice being crushed basically. Now, if we look for some of the things that are going on, the Arctic map here, remember the Barents Sea is over here. Okay, so if we, this is showing the Atlantification of the European Arctic, the observed temperature left and the salinity right profiles in the Northern Barents, Barents Sea from 1970 to 2016. Okay, so this is going down through the water column to 250 meter depth. So this is water at the surface. So from 1970 to 1999, it, you know, maybe 1.2 degrees Celsius or so at the surface, dropping down about 50 meters to the minimum, um, about minus uh, 1.2 uh, or something, and then increasing warmer as you go deeper. Now these, this whole curve has shifted. This is a shift for the 2000 to 2009 decade here and the shift to the 2010 to 2016 years. Okay, so a huge shift. Surface temperature, you know, over 2.5 degrees Celsius. Um, you know, huge rise from before. Also a corresponding shift at depth of the... Uh, coldest temperature and then the a, a, a shift uh, also in the as you go deeper down okay remember that the water down deep is warmer water is but it's very very salty so it's uh, heavier than the the fresher surface water this is a salinity um, so the salinity um, in the first decades here you know just over 33 practical salinity units uh, which is 3.3% of salt in the water. And then that's the salinity at the surface is increasing. So we're getting more Atlantic water going up towards and into the Arctic, right? The surface water in the Arctic tends to be fresher than the Atlantic Ocean because of all the meltwater and the runoff from the Arctic rivers into the Arctic Ocean Basin, you know, and it's sort of contained there. Um, so what's happening is as the ocean currents penetrate from the Atlantic into the Arctic regions, they bring the, uh, they bring higher salinity water. So we're seeing that occurring here. We're seeing Atlantification of the Arctic. Okay. So that's basically the, the gist of, of this, uh, paper. So. What we can expect, okay, so we're all kind of focused on the Arctic sea ice and the vanishing of the Arctic sea ice as we head to a blue ocean event. But the, the big question, um, there's a lot of questions about what happens to the Arctic and what happens to the atmospheric circulation, the jet streams, and what happens to the ocean currents as we as we go to this blue ocean event and have less and less arctic sea ice and the data the observations and the modeling shows basically that greenland is sticks out like a sore thumb up there it's pretty obvious so the temperatures over greenland will greatly rise and therefore we'll get a lot more uh, melt, melting of Greenland, a lot, and it's already happening. I'll, I'll probably talk about some recent papers on Greenland ice mass loss and how we're passing the point of no return. Um, also, Antarctic ice mass loss, and of course, uh, you know, we're we're actually measuring the upticks in Greenland melt and Antarctic melt uh, in the global sea level rise numbers. So basically with no sea ice, uh, you know, Greenland sticks out like a sore thumb, melt rates greatly increase. As I said in previous videos, I think the jet stream center rotation will switch to the center of cold over Greenland. 